Hello friends and welcome back to Dayton Dies. I'm not dead quite yet and neither are you, which I suppose we should both be grateful for. It seems that Pete and Carl have been tasked with uh, bridging the gap between the unicorns and the pegasi, or at the very least getting the unicorn's daughter back from the pegasi who have kidnapped them. What is this feud all about? I'm still not quite sure, but maybe we'll find out in this episode. At least I'm hoping for that. Maybe we'll get a happy happy ending. Maybe we won't. As long as Nick gets cured, it, it don't matter none too much to me. So I suppose let's just hop into it and see how it goes today. We've seen some weird things on the road. Part 16. Written by user Roseblack2222. Narrated by Brandon Dayton. In the span of about an hour, we learn that unicorns really were bloodthirsty psychopaths, but also apparently racist cannibals. <laughs> The way they tore into the Equus's corpse was stomach-churning, to say the very least. They were noisy as hell, too. And from the looks of it, they were not letting a single part of it uh, go to waste. Would you like some? The king offered. No thanks, Carl replied. We're not really hungry. Suit yourself. I take it you both understand the situation that you're in. We nodded. Good. I'll send someone out to take you where you need to go. He'll meet you outside. We couldn't get out of there fast enough, honestly. It took a great deal of my willpower not to just puke while I watched them eat. If I had, I get the feeling that I wouldn't be typing this up right now. Oh my god, I said, pausing to take a deep breath once we were going back down the steps. It smells so much better out here. You could say that again. Hey, at least your leg's all fixed up now. Yeah, but that's not really gonna matter if we can't pull this off. Don't get cynical on me, Pete. After all, <laughs> this ain't my first rescue mission. What was your last one like? A lot different from the one we're about to do, but all the ones I've completed have given me years of stealth experience. I guess I'll follow your lead on this then. A brown furred unicorn with a black horn met us outside. Around his neck was a leather bag attached to a strap, and on his back was a saddle. What's in there? I asked, pointing to the bag. Things we'll need. Now. He knelt down. Get on. His fur was silky, yet solid. Being on him was surreal enough. Having him carry us was another experience altogether. I mean, how many people can say that they have actually rode a real live unicorn? Sure, they may be psycho-fucking-assholes, at least from our experience. However, riding one was, of course, still exhilarating. We had to hold on for dear life because he was going so fast. I damn near fell off a couple of times. I can't wait to tell Nick about this, I told Carl. Same here. Like hell you will, the brown unicorn said. Why not? Carl asked. Under most circumstances, you two would never be able to do this. You're getting off before any of those harpies or especially the Equo see us. And if you ever tell anyone about this, I will find you and stomp you to death in your sleep. We both knew that he would follow through with this threat if either of us talked. Now I know what you're thinking. Pete, haven't you done exactly that by typing all this up? Well... Due to reasons that I'm about to explain, we're actually safe from this threat. Uh, are we close? I inquired. We're nearly there. Take out what's in the pouch. Carl opened it to find some torches and two swords. To light them, all you have to do is strike them against something. Got it, Carl said. The Equos or Pegasus Forest was more akin to a regular forest, although one could tell that it was different. It's kind of hard to explain. All I can really say is that it had a certain vibrancy that distinguished it from forests found on planet Earth. Overlooking the forest was a snow-covered mountaintop. On top of that was a pearl-white mountain that stretched up into the skies. I take it the princess is in there, I asked. You'd be correct. In all likelihood, she's probably being kept in their dungeon. A brown unicorn slowed to a stop. This is where you must get off. He knelt again, and we slid down, along with the bag. Now, I must return to the king and queen. 
I'll be back here by sunrise in case you two are actually successful. Godspeed. Almost as if it came from out of nowhere, a blur cut across the forest, accompanied by a loud shrieking. Before the brown unicorn could even react, we saw a large slash form on his neck. Blood sprayed from it, and we stared. Oh shit alarms going off in our head. Run! He choked out with his last breath, then falling over dead. We bolted, diving behind one of the trees. From our vantage point, we got a good view of the harpies. Now, these weren't the kind that you would see in the artwork of, I don't know, Yu-Gi-Oh cards. These looked way closer to how the ancient Greeks depicted them. The best way I can describe them is being a cross between a condor and an eagle, but with human faces. Instead of having mouths or noses, they possessed very sharp beaks. We were really lucky that they didn't notice us or else it would have been us on their menu. Getting eaten seemed to be a recurring risk for us now. I can't decide what repulsed me more. The way that they fed or the way that the unicorns fed. The way the harpies pulled and stretched the raw meat off the bones was scary to be sure. However, the unicorns cannibalism is terrifying on principle. Even if they see themselves as different beings from the equos. In either case, our situation did not look good. Not only did we have to go farther between those monstrosities, now we had no way of getting back to the castle. It felt like being between a rock and a hard place that was filled with monsters. Well, this is just fucking dandy, I said, as we were walking further into the forest, making sure to use the trees as cover. Why can't things ever go smoothly for us? Wish I knew the answer to that. <laughs> At least we haven't been spotted. That mountain's gonna be one hell of a climb, though. I've been thinking about that. We've been walking for a while now. I know it's risky, but do you think we should stop to rest? If we did, we'd have more strength to make it up the mountain, right? Not to mention more strength to get the princess and go back down it. It doesn't sound like a bad idea, actually. Then let's find a good spot to set up camp. Hey, is it just me, or did it get really cold all of a sudden? Now that you mention it, yeah. Oh, wait. No. What? Low moans, carried by the wind, became audible, and I understood suddenly why Carl was so on edge. Well, the unicorns definitely mentioned that there would be harpies hanging around, but poltergeists or, or ghosts or whatever the hell we're dealing with here, that's really the only thing I know that can create an instant cold in that type of way. Maybe it's a full-blown lich. I don't know how deep the power of these pegasi go, <laughs> but I really do think that Carl and Pete might be in over their heads in this situation. Have you ever tried to kill a lich? Unless you know where they're hiding their phylactery, it's basically an impossible task, so... I don't know, man. <laughs> Fingers crossed that it's just a, a regular poltergeist and not a lich. But even regular ghosts, don't you need silver or something like that in order to even fight them? Whew, stealth is definitely their best option, so I just hope that they can maintain that. So while you're camping, no campfires, no sing-alongs, <laughs> no nothing. Just keep your head low. Oh boy, this is quite a task. Let's just hope that it gets completed, and let's just hope that Nick is exceedingly grateful for all the shit that his boys have gone through. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this episode, friends. If you did, I hope you like, comment, and or subscribe. Maybe share the video around. That's a pretty cool thing to do. Join us again tomorrow for the continuation and another creepypasta video. In order to do so, you need to keep yourself safe out there. Stay far away from harpies. Although they do move fast, <laughs> just keep your head on a swivel, I guess. And I will see you again tomorrow. Thank you, as always, for watching. And until then, my friends, bye-bye. Uh,